Arkadaşlar Flash Bam. Anne Flash Bam. Siz de dedim. Efendim. Ne yüzden değil. Siz de gerçekten. Ay akıdan mısın? Bam. Ali Dersin. Asya'da. Da. Mubek. Tu. Hong Kong. Sana. Ay. Yes. Mali Kancı. Mali. So I think in a year a civil country. And here's many of us. Here's the angels of my mother's son, the Mary Clinton, the whole human black of what the reverse committee of whole human city. Here's a magical ambassador, then the culture and the of science, Mary Clinton. And many others. What is interesting is Felix has the other new iPhone machine from Samsung, and he has is the first one to operate out of America Center. Some first time I hear somebody operating out of America Center. Apart from French and Korea, he's got a beautiful set up. And over to you, Felix. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for the invitation to this um, lecture section, which specified the high intensity focus ultrasound, the era of non invasive gynec surgery. I'm going to share my experience from minimally invasive to non-invasive surgery for the management of my patients. Like many others, our training started with open surgery, then impressed with the minimally invasive surgery. Now many of us become minimally invasive surgeons. We started with diagnostic laparoscopy and the laparoscopic tubal sterilization. My minimally invasive surgery developed quickly when I moved to Australia in 1993, working at Liverpool Hospital. And I had the chance to develop the minimally invasive training center uh, promoting and training doctors in minimally invasive surgery. I started my laparoscopic surgery with a conventional four-port laparoscopic surgery. Over the years, my laparoscopic surgery approach have changed to a modified three-port hidden scar surgical approach, which have been published in the journal. Now 95% of my laparoscopic surgery are using this approach. I use a five millimeter laparoscope, Adam Blykes, and using it to introduce the second port at the left lower quadrant of the abdomen. And then the last port will be either a five millimeter or 10 millimeter trocar port at the umbilicus, just near the first umbilical port. They are separate by just a few millimeter. The 10 millimeter port at the umbilicus can be used to introduce, remove specimen or to use uh, um, for the moisturization of uh, fibroids. I also use nowadays various simple port device for this device, I will use the single port laparoscopic surgery. It helped to produce wonderful result for my patient cosmetically. Not only I can remove, uh, I can do many laparoscopic surgery with these two approach and my patient all are happy other than the, in addition to the um, uh, uncomplicated surgery. However, for the uterine 
fibroid, which have to use hysteroscopy, um, hysterectomy, and myomectomy. Even though we have the abdominal approach, vaginal approach, and laparoscopic approach, however, despite our skill, problems still exist. We have patients with bleeding during surgery, after surgery, infection, they experience pain um, during uh, after surgery. It takes them a long time to recover. The healing takes at least four to six weeks. And worse still, they may have the organ to remove. For the fibroids, sometimes the uterus are being removed. All this approach also depends on our skill. Complication, however, may occur because of the process of learning and practicing. Of course, even with the presence of another alternative approach, the robotic surgery, with the easy manipulation of the minimally invasive surgery approach, similar to the laparoscopic surgery, it has less bleeding, easy for us to, to for suturing. We show no hand tremor, and it's the top of the art in laparoscopic surgery, which is getting uh, popularity and improving. The technique uh, is improving, even single port robotic surgery. I am in a crossroad of whether to change to this approach or not. However, the expenses of the instrument and Darwinsky and the, also the disposable instrument, the investment is great. The training and lastly, I think many of my patients do not need this uh, alternative robotic surgery. Therefore, when there was an unusual opportunity and chances in year 2017, 17, I met Professor Wong Jibel at one of the meetings in China. I learned from him his minimal uh, non-invasive surgical approach. Now, he's the founder or rather the inventor of the focus ultrasound surgery. He is able to focus the ultrasound to a point where to drive the energy to heat up the target tissue up to 90 to 100 degree. And you can see you can burn a plastic board. However, the hand in between the transducer and the target point is not affected. Now, I will visit the Chungqing Haifu Medical Technology Company, which he founded to develop this minimally uh, non-invasive surgery. Surgery, And I also visit um, the company, the new site, and it's a well-established high technology company with great potential to develop focus ultrasound surgery further. Then I visit many high intensity focus ultrasound treatment centers in China. And also I visit Korea, Taiwan and United Kingdom to see many of this development of this new surgical approach. This new surgical approach gave me the impression that not only it focused the ultrasound able to destroy a solid lesion, for example, a fibroid, which I'm talking about, and the patient doesn't need general anesthesia, doesn't need intubation, like uh, minimal invasive surgery, doesn't require any sharp instrument that will cause bleeding. There's no bleeding at all. The best approach is that this surgery can allow us to keep the organ that is being treated. The patient can recover very quickly and can go home as a day only surgery and can go back to work in a couple of days. And this, the high food procedures that's being done in my uh, high food center. 
the surgeon are just facing the computer control. And we are looking at the computer and identify under the ultrasound the fibroids, uh, the pneumosis, and the nurses and the anesthetists can work in a small room and then we can perform the surgery without much problem. No need for a uh, clean instrument and gun and the room are present. The way how we do it is that we focus the ultrasound when we are able to see the fibroid and sorry for the picture is not uh, very clear but the technique to do it is to this the target bone where once we press the button it will heat it up and the energy will deliver here when we can see tissue necrosis we can either see great some grayscale change or uh, you can see the white patches that are starting to appear now we will burn point by point so that the whole layer of the fibroid are being burned and then we move to the other layer from the side of it and stun until the whole fibroid or adenomyosis being treated now i'm not going to talk about the effectiveness the safety and complication of focused ultrasound surgery as this data can be available from the literature just easy to say for the treatment of fibroid and adenomyosis up to 80 to 95 percent effective with minimal complication and much reduced major risk and low recurrent rate and the theater they are unlike those in the mind of our patient the nurses and the doctors we don't need a theater for instrument an operating table and this is the pictures where people are panic by the time they enter into the theater for operation now this is my theater in hong kong which i set up the high full uh, high intensity focus ultrasound surgery you can see the environment is totally different it's not like a traditional theater and it's just a theater where it look quite present and the setting of it have been reported in the a page journal now not only the wonderful present environment during our surgery the patient is fully awake. Some patient can even um, read their um, smartphone. And we also invite relative, the mother of friend to come to join them so that um, they won't feel too scared of the procedures. They can talk to the parent and uh, talk to the mother or husband. So during the surgery. Now, in conventional surgery, which is quite different because patients go through a conventional surgery fully unconscious and when they wake up they are full of pain this are our experience with conventional open and laparoscopic surgery doctor perform the conventional surgery as a team and there's also risk of infection that's why we all with a septic gun and uh, we need a lot of helper and that's the problem of the conventional surgery the focus ultrasound surgery or non-invasive surgery is make a big conception changes of the surgery instead of group team of doctor you just have a experienced high food doctors and operating on the patient Instead of patient put under general anesthesia, the patient can be awake to talk to the nurse. We don't need a big theater. We don't need so many instruments. We don't need a change room. We don't need the storage space or CSSD area. 
So it saves a lot of area for our theater and expenditure. And we don't need all this instrument and swap to count it before and after surgery because the surgery just rely on a single machine. Therefore, the investment and the facility we can set up to provide this surgery actually reduce the cost for a patient, reduce the cost of each surgery. I compare the focus ultrasound surgery with the conventional surgery. And I report a paper that tell the surgery they are quite different. Focus ultrasound surgery do not induce any wound. And the um, uterus is conserved in focus ultrasound surgery and the operating time is shorter. It doesn't require general anesthesia and there's no blood loss compared to what we know from open surgery and laparoscopic surgery. And there's rarely any infection and there's no adhesion formation or minimal adhesion formation. The patient recovery is very quick, less than seven days compared to four to six weeks in laparoscopic and open surgery. They take less sick leave and the fertility can be conserved because the ovary is preserved. It does not affect the future pregnancy. Even normal delivery is okay for this group of patients treated with um, non-invasive high food surgery. Now, I also can share my experience that this focus ultrasound surgery is exceptionally good in certain circumstances. For example, I have a patient that's a young athlete and she has heavy bleeding, so much so that she become anemic due to a recurrent fibroid, which a myomectomy already done many years ago. She was not allowed to take any hormone or painkiller and um, due to the anti-doping association, the code. And which, however, she need to have the fibroid treated to recover from her anemia so that she can um, recover soon to meet a uh, competition. She received the high food abrasion treatment for her fibroid this is the fibroid before the operation, around 9 to 10 centimeter, and she recovered well after the surgery and able to meet the challenge of her spot. And this is the fibroid after one year, and um, it's already reduced 70 to 80 percent uh, in size. I've got other patients. There's two patients, one with a large fibroid, and the other with adenomyosis with severe bleeding. Both of them have severe bleeding, which they need to be treated. However, these two young patients have cerebral vascular accident with a cerebral stroke just a few months before the surgery. And after waiting for a year, and they still receive um, no surgical treatment because of the risk of um, recurrent thrombosis. So I treat them with high flow surgery and they recover well and they become asymptomatic after the treatment. They are uneventful. Also for cases of adenomyosis, patients suffer a lot from um, dysmenorrhea and heavy bleeding due to adenomyosis. Many of these adenomyosis are disfused. Their only treatment we have is minimally invasive surgery to remove the uterus and of course um, to removing a large bulk of the uterine wall will weaken um, <clears throat> the patient's chance of a successful delivery. <coughs> However, the treatment with high food will change the whole thing because like this patient, after high food treatment, <coughs> The, fiber, uh, the uterus have much reduced in size with the active adenomyosis lesion disappear. Her pain, uh, visual score, have reduced from 9 to 0.5. She's very happy with the result. Now, another lady 
with adenomyosis in the uterus. However, she also have associated uh, bladder endometriosis. We managed to treat her adenomyosis as well as the bladder and the endometriosis at the same time. Now she, after a year, she has much reduced symptoms due to her adenomyosis and bladder endometriosis. Now, not only that, ultrasound can have effect at the cellular level. It changed the nature of the cellular membrane. In this way, that facilitate drugs and nanoparticles to enter into the intracellular space during the ultrasound sonication. As a result, it's possible that nanoparticles with drug or no drugs able to enter into any individual cells with focused ultrasound surgery. It can produce more effective thermal burn and physical destruction of cells. In this way, we believe research in this area can further enhance the um, high food surgery by reducing the operation time, the use of powers and the dosage of the nanoparticle can be adjusted so that it can be a more targeted treatment. Now, the other advantages of the high full non-invasive non -invasive surgery development, from my opinion, that is a unique surgical approach. Because non-invasive focused surgery, ultrasound uh, surgery, and its impact on the environmental climate change. Now, why do I say so? Because you can see the way we treat our patient, there's no medical waste, there's no blood loss, there's no instrument to be washed, and there's no contaminated uh, swap. At the end of the day, the medical waste is much reduced. When all these medical waste are added together, it may impact on the environmental. And hopefully, more use of this alternative surgical approach can make a difference for the medical waste from any hospital. Not only that, it reduces the risk infection risk to the patient and the injury to the doctors and nurses and all this can be reduced because the surgery does not involve any wound does not involve any um, use of a sharp instrument now further research and further development in this high intensity focus ultrasound area will further improve the safety and the effectiveness of the surgery thus further reduce the complication of any surgery. The expansion of this high food surgery into the area of cancer, benign, cyst, and other application will greatly change the surgical scene in gynecology. So I foresee the change of surgery. From now the advanced laparoscopic surgery to either robotic surgery or another direction for the, especially for the time being, fibroid and adenomyosis using focused ultrasound surgery. More development need to, to be done and for extend the use of high food surgery into other area in gynecology. For those who are interested in learning more about this focused ultrasound surgery in gynecology and in the treatment of adenomyosis, I have published two books this year from the Springer publisher. If people want to download this two book, you can go to the Springer publisher website to download the e-book. E this is my contact. I welcome people to contact me for your interest in focused ultrasound non-invasive surgery. Thank you for your attention.